What's up and welcome back everybody. We're here today in my snake room. Now today we're gonna do a snake update. We're gonna feed the snakes. We're gonna show you guys my pool pond. Look at it over there. Ah, no, no, no. All right, back over here. And we're also gonna show you guys the snake skin that we skinned from that python. So if you come over here, this is that python we caught. Now if you guys remember, this was a seven foot, eight inch snake. Now look how long the skin is. It's massive. This skin is probably almost 10 foot long. So we tan this bad boy out, we put it in some glycerin and in some alcohol. Then we put it in some salt. We pin this guy out on a board and we applied some tanning solution. But this is my first python skin I've tanned like this and it came out absolutely beautiful. Now when you get a skin that's nice and loose like this, that's what you want. So we can take this skin and we can make things, we can make a wallet, we can make boots, but we're not gonna do that. This snake was an awesome find with Daniel and my cousin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it up on a board and we're gonna slap it right up here up top in the snake room. That way we can look at the skin and remember forever that great day we had out in the glades. Now this is the raw skin. A lot of people don't know when you tan a skin, there's actually literal scales, almost like a fish. And you have to scrub them off and they'll actually peel right off. Look, here's, here's some right here. Now that's not snake skin. This is actually a layer of scale that's on the skin. This snake shedded right after we caught him. So this is not snake skin. These are actual scales. And also we have my buddy Robert. He hit me up, he said, Stone, let me get that skull. I can articulate that thing. So I gave him this Python skull. It took him about two weeks, but he articulated this bad boy back into a Python skull, fully mounted, everything intact. Now he told me, listen, when I did this head, everything fell apart. All the teeth came out. Robert literally had to glue each one of these teeth on one by one. Now this is not a snake you would want to get bit by. That bad boy has about 120 teeth in his mouth. And if you look up top, in the last video, I talked about that second row of teeth. Look at that second row of teeth. It's alien-like. This is some alien versus predator stuff right here. But this is super cool, so thank you, Robert. I really appreciate it. Love you, man. This was his first Python skull he's done as well, and it came out Beautiful, look at that thing. All right, but enough of this Python stuff. Come over here to my pool pond. Now you guys actually haven't seen this yet. I built this pool pond in the past couple weeks. Now what I did is I purchased some African cichlids and we got some red-tailed catfish in here. So basically what I want this to be is a predator pond. Now what we did, this trash can over here, that's a large filter. So we got an underwater pump that pumps water up this PVC pipe into this trash can. In this trash can, we have charcoal, we have ceramic beads, we have bio balls, we have poi filter, all kinds of media that can filter this water. And as you can see, this water is crystal clear. These are actually shovel nose, red tail catfish hybrids. So these are a hybrid between the two and these catfish are actually found in South America in the Amazon. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get some food for these guys. Right here, this is Massive Ore Delight. They love this stuff. Now these guys, I'll feed them tilapia, shrimp, uh, dry food like this. They go absolutely insane for this. Let's see if he'll come up. Oh, he feels it on his head. Feels it on his head. Now what they'll do, you see his little you see his tentacles? They can touch this food and they can actually pick up the scents on this food. So they have very, very poor eyesight, but once their tentacles hit that food, they know exactly what it is and will devour it. Now come over here, look at this one. This guy, he's more of the big guy. He is a hybrid as well, but I think he's got a little bit more shovel nose in him. Let's see if we can get this big guy to come up. Now these catfish will literally gorge themselves. They'll eat until their bellies are full. Now these catfish, you don't need to feed them every day. You can feed them every couple days because they gorge themselves so much. We got both of them right here. Now these guys, they're used to being hand-fed tilapia. That's why when I put my hand out, these guys will come right up to it. But they're still a little bit shy. I just got these catfish. But the plan for this pond is to keep it a predator pond. So we wanna put catfish in here. We wanna put big bass, things that basically are predators. We don't wanna put any small fish in here because they will get ate. Now, like I said, these guys are from the Amazon. So you wanna keep the water very, very warm. Now in my snake room, it's already 85 degrees year round. 
And what we do is we add a heater in this water so that way we can keep it extra toasty. Right now you'll see all these little aerators. We've got about four aerators in here. That helps to keep the water oxygenated. And also so does this water flowing in. It causes a lot of bubbles and it helps these fish breed and grow and live healthier. Enough of the fish, let's go feed some snakes. Now the last time you guys saw my snakes, we were hatching out a bunch of baby snakes. And these guys have grown up just a little bit and their colors have enhanced a lot. One of the nicest ones is the Hyper E Hypo Florida King Snakes. Look at this guy. They're almost a solid red. Let's take them out, see if we can get his colors a little bit better. It's hard to pick up all the reds. It's showing up a little bit orange. But to the human eye, in person, these guys are absolutely on fire. We fed these babies yesterday, but we do have some mice that I defrosted. We're gonna give a quick snack to my breeder king snakes real quick. Now, if you guys are interested, if you like any of these king snakes, you see a morph that you want and you like, go ahead, send me a message on Instagram or comment down below on this YouTube video, and I can actually sell you one of these king snakes. Now, my second favorite is the Hybino. This is a mixture between a hypo and an albino. Now, these are Florida king snakes. So as this guy grows and as he ages, his colors are gonna get a lot more lighter and a lot more nicer. Now these are just holding tubs for our babies. Once they get a little bit bigger than that, we start to put them in these super, super long tubs down here. And this is where these guys will live till they're about foot and a half. Then we'll upgrade them to the 28 quart tubs. This is one of people's favorites, the white-sided Xanthix. Now if you look at this guy's sides, they're all white. That gives them the name white-sided Florida King snakes. And these are exanthic white sides. So if you look at his eyes, they're all black with a red pupil. Look, these snakes, they're almost see-through. If you look at his bottom half, you can actually see his organs right through his skin. All right, the next snake I'm gonna show you, a three jean snake, and it's very rare to hit. It's called a white-sided snow, AKA a magenta. So this is a white-sided snake, but it has the gene snow as well. So it's all white instead of just white sides. If you look at his eyes, they're solid red. You can see him flicking his tongue, tasting the air. Now these guys, if I come out here with a rat, if I come out here with a mouse, they immediately smell it and it changes their mood. But once I pick them up and they put their tongue on my skin and they can tell I'm not a threat, they can tell it's not food, usually these guys are pretty cool. See his tail? This is one of the defense mechanisms these guys will do. Now these snakes are from Florida. So once you touch them or aggravate them, they'll actually wag their tail to, to, mimic, to, mimic, to, to, to mimic the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. They'll wag that tail. Check that out right there. To people who don't know about snakes, haven't seen a lot, you see the snake in the wild, you see it rattling its tail, you think, oh, that's a rattlesnake, but it's not. It's just a Florida King snake. These are the jellies. You guys have seen these before. They call them jellies because when they hatch out, they're actually purple. But as these guys age, they turn to a yellow color. So this snake, when it's an adult, it will look like this. See how the color is much more lighter? This right here is a baby jelly, and this is an adult. You can see just how much their color changes. Love this snake right here. All right, guys, we're gonna show you one more snake. It's the last morph we have, and it's called lavender. Now, lavender is a super cool morph. The colors on it are very, very enhanced. Too many snakes, too many snakes. Here we go, here's a lavender, here's a female lavender. Look at the colors on that guy. If you look towards his neck, he's got that starburst orange. Absolutely beautiful snake. And when these guys are adults, man, do they look different. All right, y'all, the last thing we got to do is feed these big snakes. So let's jump right into it. We're gonna put this guy back in his little home. We're gonna grab some of these rats. And when you're working with snakes, if you don't wanna get bit, use tongs, okay? So we're gonna use these defrosted rats, super clean, healthy. Now these snakes, they don't need to eat live mice anymore. They've been in captivity so long that they know when food is coming. They know what food smells like just by the taste. All they gotta do is flick their tongue and they'll go in for the bite. That's one of the adult female white sides. You can see the white sides, when they get adults, their color doesn't change much. They get a little bit whiter on the sides, but that's about it. This girl right here, she's usually crazy when it comes to feeding. Now you guys saw me when I just pulled her out. She was cool, she was fine, right? She was putting her head on my hand, she wasn't biting, but now she can smell the rats. So all we gotta do is give her one taste of that rat. One taste. You can see how her demeanor changes, okay? She's in hunting mode. She wants to eat.
Look how these snakes are so used to being in captivity. This snake doesn't care if I'm holding it. It's still eating this rat. It knows it's okay. It knows I'm not a threat. And she'll probably just start to chow down on it. She doesn't need to be in her enclosure. Now we just fed these guys about two days ago. We feed them extra large mice. Now each adult gets around two to three mice a week. Right now we just pulled out one for each snake just so you guys can get a little clip of how these guys eat, how they strike, and just to see how acclimated they are. Just gonna pop her right back in there. And she's just gonna enjoy that little mouse of a snack. This is another crazy. Watch out. Now she smells the rat already. She knows what's going down. Ooh. Look at that. Pop her right in here. And that's how you feed a man to a snipe. This snake is a female. She's an absolute beast. She's always been an aggressive eater. It's just the way she is. And I've noticed that her offspring is very, very aggressive eaters as well. Like that. She wastes no time coiling that thing up. Now, she knows it's dead, but if I grab it and I wiggle, she's gonna wrap it up more because she thinks it's alive. So she's just getting the job done. All right, who's next? Who's next? This is a really cool snake. This is called a pink pearl snow. This is a female as well. Now I've said it in the past, a lot of these snakes with red eyes, a lot of these albino snakes, they actually have very, very poor vision. So when they go to eat and when they go to strikes, it's usually a very, very slow strike. And most of the time, if not all the time, they usually miss. All right, this guy right here, he's made a mess of his enclosure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take his bin out. This guy, he's about due for an upgrade. I'm gonna grab a clean, fresh bin. This is one of my favorite snakes. I raised this snake from a little baby, a hatchling, just like this from Scott McFarland. And he ended up growing up being one of my best breeders. And I gotta be careful because I got rat scent all over me. So this guy, he will bite me if he has the chance, just because he's mistaking my arm for food, not because he wants to bite me. Let's see. This guy's a good feeder as well. One thing I think a lot of people don't cover is when snakes eat, a lot of times they'll actually go into a rat nest and they'll grab one rat and they'll kill two. And this is how they do it. Watch my finger. He's eating that rat right now. But if I put my finger right here and I move it, look how he coils up my finger. That just shows you when this guy goes into a rat nest in the wild, he'll eat one rat and he'll actually kill another with the opposite side of his tail, getting two meals in one. Oof, look, and it's, it's on there tight. That's, that's constricting. He's not holding on. He's literally constricting my finger. Oh, this is like a Chinese finger trap. Pull. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're free. Super gentle strike. Always, always call it. This is called an Arctic Florida king snake. This is probably one of the more expensive ones I have. It's a four gene king snake. So he's got four different genes at play right here and he's solid white. Now I love white animals. Watch out, cause he'll bite you. He'll bite you. Come on, up, up. Ooh, <laughs> watch out, son. He'll get your pants. <laughs> now look, this snake, he's just confused. He thinks Chandler's pants is food, but it's not. So I wasn't lying when I said this guy was aggressive. Let's see, ooh, ooh, ooh. he's coming back on me. I had to do the spin. Let's see if he'll eat right from the tongs. Ooh, ooh. Annihilation. Desecration. That don't scream magnificent. I don't know what does. Now guys, it's the new year. We're gonna be posting more. We're gonna be posting at least once a week, if not three times a week. So you guys be ready. I love when you guys comment, love when you guys like the videos, especially comment. So if you guys watch this video, you see something cool, you have a question, don't be afraid to go in the comment section below and ask me. Who's next? Another white sided. Guys, we're gonna be doing big things here soon in the future. We're selling a lot of these king snakes we're sending out our permits for some other species of animals. We're not gonna tell you yet, it's gonna be a surprise. But soon, you guys will see what we have coming to Stone's World. Oh no. Oh, oh no, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he's oh, hungry. No. Look, this, oh, no. this guy doesn't ki care, he, he's out for blood. Look, he'll eat the same, uh, uh, same rat all over again. Snakes, baby. Perfect.
All right, guys, that is the end of today's video. If you guys liked today's video, if you liked watching these snakes eat, if you like seeing this snake room, comment down below, leave a like, and be sure to subscribe to Stone's World, and we'll see you next time. Skip!